everybody, Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist Joshua Crumbly. Hey, Raul. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Oh, my pleasure. Joshua, we're touching base in the middle of the pandemic. We're able to talk thanks to the virtue of Skype. I know you've got a new release. And before we get to all that exciting stuff, as always, we like to know a little bit about you. How did you get started in music and on bass? Yeah, so I got started in music through my dad. He was my dad and a big brother at the same time. I'm an only child. So I used to follow him to every one of his gigs just about every weekend. And for some reason, the bass stood out to me. And he tricked me into playing piano first, so I started on classical piano. And then about four years into that, when I was nine, I was like, Dad, I'm ready for the bass. And um, so at nine, started bass. With you taking up the bass, and I know your dad's a sax player. Was he helping you along with learning the music side of it? Totally. I mean, he would coach me through through everything, ever since the piano to bass, you know, learning Teen Town at a young age and... I would wake him up every morning and I would have like a little bit more of Teen Town or something and get him out of bed. And <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then I think he he also like ingrained me playing melodically on the bass. OK. You know, he was always big on, you know, learning the melody and just expressing myself in that way. And I think that's something that I hold on to to this day through my music. Interesting. Now, from there, as you were growing, if I'm not mistaken, you went to Juilliard? Yes, uh-huh. Um, 17 years old. Um, I'm from right outside of L.A., so okay. it, was a, it was a big move. And I'm just learning that my parents were both crying their eyes out when I left <laughs> for months and months. But yeah, I learned a lot. I got to study with Ron Carter and Ben Wolf, and also got a dream call at the time with Terrence Blanchard uh, nice. during my freshman year of college and I was in his quintet for about five years and that led to a lot of the opportunities that still are coming around to this day. Very nice. Now with that, your new album Rise, you mm -hmm. are, it's, it's more kind of in the role of, of solo bassist. Again, there are other musicians, so it's not just yeah. you by yourself. Tell us about your, your new project Rise. It went live in May? It went live in May. Yeah. And so kind of getting back to my upbringing, I started playing gigs with my dad at 10 years old. All types of music, too. I was into rock and then started playing by ear in church and all that. So it's a combination, culmination of all my musical experiences. And just the due to the fact that I started so very young and, you know, moved out to New York. And it, it was just like came a time where I was kind of burnt out on music and just wondering if, you know, there was something you know, some other purpose for me out in the world. And I happened to be visiting my parents um, along one of those times where I was second guessing my career path and everything. And so I was talking to my dad, I was like, you know, I think, I think I'm done. You know, I think I want to try something else. And uh, he said something to the extent of like, hey, son, go upstairs and play the bass. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went upstairs and then um, came up with the bass ostinato that Rise is built on. And it sort of, um, it uplifted me from that kind of dark spot that I was in. And so from that song being birthed, it, it kind of brought into fruition me wanting to um, share an album under my own name and sort of pass that uplifting spirit that occurred with me writing that to the listener and to all of the musicians involved. On those, uh, I, I've seen, of course, the, the trailer, listened to some of the music. There, there's a tune titled For Victor. Oh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. I listened to Victor hours and hours on a day, like, you know, when I was a young kid. And um, I got a chance to meet him when I was like either nine or 10 at the NAMM show mm -hmm. at the Fender booth. And um, he took me under his wing. He gave me my first bass amp and just always challenged me when we would go to his house with technical things. And, and he taught me how to play a shuffle. And there's just so much, he, you know, he, he was just huge for me. And um, anyway, you know, he passed a few years ago, sadly, and I wanted to make a, a dedication to him. And so that's, you know, something that I, that's an ode to uh, how much Victor meant to me. And, and one of the big parts of the recording process of the album Rise is like, with certain songs, we would all collectively reflect on the meaning behind it. 
so I told everybody what the song is about, but obviously to relate to it in their own way. So during that song, we were all reflecting on gratitude. Very interesting. Very interesting. And with your voice, because gear is just the extension of your hands and your creative mm -hmm. self. Tell us, how are you getting your sound? What are you playing on? Yeah, I'm currently with Fender. So a lot of American Pro Series P's, P5's on the record, you know, there's a Hofner in there. I kind of went to town with some of the bases that the studio had, a Moon jazz bass. But on the road, I'm just using Fenders with Kamasi and, and Leon bridges. And Any choice in amplification? Fender Super Bassmans. Wow, Fender across the board. Yeah, and just made the switch to Labella Strings. Nice. So really enjoying their deep talking flats and their RX nickels. Now, there's a detail, and I, this could be a Fender thing too, but the connection between your instrument to your amplifier, do you have a choice in instrument cables? Wow. You know, a good friend of mine sent me this brilliant cable, and I'm spacing on the name of the company. It's super high end. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I use that at, at home in uh, when I'm recording. But yeah, I kind of, I need to figure that out, Raul. Yeah. Um, that's actually a relationship that I'm hoping to foster soon, get a, a cable of choice. Yeah. You have any recommendations? <laughs> We can go in depth. I think one of the key things is, is that I think with instrument cables for many musicians, a lot of it starts out kind of at what is functional at the, at the least possible price. Mm -hmm. And I always reflect back to my first instrument cable. It was a curly cable, kind of like they used to have on the old phones. Right. And it was pretty terrible. And... Uh, <laughs> But it was it was what I could get. I think it was, you know, it stretched to maybe six feet. So you had to stay close to your amp and, you know, it had some limitations. But right. definitely there is something to be said for good quality instrument cables. And especially when with touring musicians, something that is built that is durable because it is something that takes a beating whether you want it to or not. Right. So... Anyway, are there any other elements that you particularly utilize? Particular pedals, effects, anything? Yeah, I love the Ready 2 DI. I use that on the record. The Aguilar Optimizer is on there. Fender Delay Reverb pedal that they just came out with, the green one. I used on the end of For Victor. Yeah, a ton of stuff. Well, it is, it is one of the things that, especially with solo performing, it, it's pretty wide open, your choices of the voices and how you want to work your sounds. If you're trying to fit into a particular kind of music, let's say you're doing heavy metal, mm -hmm. you may be kind of locked into certain sounds that people want, a little more distortion, a little more fuzz, you know, kind of go, okay, this is what's expected of this. And mm -hmm. I remember there was a, a famous rock band way back when, and the question to come out what pedals they were using. And it was interesting because they weren't using any pedals. It was just the distorted sound of the amp. Uh -huh. But that was, that was it. That was the rock and roll of the time. And it was kind of this beat up <laughs> distorted sound. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but if, you, if they wanted to play anything else, they were always going to sound the same. You know? mm -hmm. And here you've got pretty wide open choices. Now, with this being in the pandemic, as we're talking about choices, I know that you'd had some tour plans. Mm-hmm. Are you on, on hold as many musicians are or what, what's in the works? Yeah, I had a CD release show scheduled for June 6th in LA for Pies and that didn't happen. And then I was supposed to go out with Leon Bridges and we had some stadium dates opening up for Maroon 5 and all of those are on hold as well. So pretty much everything's up in the air. And no one really knows when things are going to get up and running again. So I just been trying to um, do some writing. Like I've been saying, when I write, I'm big on reflecting on, on certain things. So I've been writing a lot and, and doing some recording at home, trying to get out and uh, take a walk. And I'm actually here with my parents in L.A. I'm based in New York. But when the pandemic hit, I happened to be out here and have been out here for months now. And, and my mom said the other day she would have never imagined a time with all of us being together this much. So, you know, trying to focus on the 
the blessings within this uncertain time as much as possible. Absolutely. And so with some of your videos, of course, I, the, I, I was assuming that that was not New York desert that you were walking <laughs> through. Yeah, yeah. It's Vasquez Rocks, about a half an hour or so outside of L.A. Yeah, the, the landscape, I'm going, yeah, that's not, that, that's not East Coast. That's, that's more no. our, our end of the country. I'm totally a desert, desert guy. I, <laughs> I was born in Palmdale, or I grew up in Palmdale, California. Okay. Where Afro Man is, is from, I guess. <laughs> Got you. Well, and looking ahead, we know that the tour stuff is on hold. We know that you're kind of working on your own material. Do you have any plans or aspirations kind of further out, hopefully when things have normalized and, and gotten, what would you like to be doing? Yeah, I'm hoping to get into film scoring okay. as well. Um, a lot of my friends, you know, mentioned that they see images and imagery when they listen to my music. And so that's something the next challenge that I hope to get into and looking forward to getting back on the road with Leon and just continuing to build this sort of new path for me as an artist as well. I definitely want to share the music live as much as possible. Very cool. Well, and if people want to stay on top of what you're doing, joshuacrumbly.com is the best place to look? Yeah, that's a great place. Or Instagram at joshuacrumbly. Okay. As well. Very nice. Well, Joshua, we appreciate you taking time, uh, inviting in into your parents' home so that we could have a chance to chat. Folks, you've seen him here. Joshua Crumbly coming to you live on Bass Musician Magazine. Thank you, Raul. <laughs>